Uh, Jennifer Carl McNeil Finnegale TD is with us as well. Uh, Jennifer, what can you say to all of that? I'm just so angry about it, as, so, as everybody else in the country is. And I listen to women describing how they've changed their behaviour and it is their lived experience. And I, First of all, like everybody else, I want to offer my deepest condolences to Ashling's family and to her community and to Lamore and the kids in her class. Her life has been taken in a most vicious and aggressive and horrific way and it just has to stop. Um, the women of Ireland, the people of Ireland are deeply angry about this and they're right to be. This is a pattern that goes on and on and on and on, this viciousness and aggressiveness to women, and it simply has to stop. And everybody has to ask themselves what they can do to try to contribute to that, to try to contribute to whatever we can do culturally to change the attitudinal situation where violence to women is continues, continues, continues to be normalised or legitimised or accepted in any way whatsoever. And we're told, you know, don't wear this or don't go here, don't go there, don't go out at night and what, don't go for a job during the day after school. It's just absolutely, it's just absolute nonsense. It, it cannot be tolerated. And it's not just in Ireland. It's a pattern right across Europe. Sarah Everett, I think it was a year ago when she died in London and everybody was absolutely correctly outraged at that at night time, an attack on a beautiful girl in Ballyfarm this week. And it is that cycle of violence against women that simply has to end. A lot of people are saying this is a law and order issue, but does it go way deeper into being an educational issue going back to from when children, how they're brought up? It goes way deeper. It is a law and order issue. And the full rigours of the law, you've heard what Connor is saying there about the investigation, full rigours of the law will be brought to this. But a woman should be able to go for a jog in the afternoon without, it, without concern there is no woman in Ireland, I believe, that goes for a job in the, in the afternoon or any other time without considering her safety. Everybody takes steps, whether they're sitting on a bus. I stopped jogging when I moved uh, to the area that I live in because it's just a bit dark. It's just that I don't go, you know, for a walk in the morning, you know, where I, I might during the summer. People change their behaviour. They don't take the dart because they have to get back from the dart. They might drive during the winter. Women every single day are aware when they walk down the street, if it's a woman coming towards them, it's grand. If it's a man, they always just ch- clock it they check it and they do that all day every day and it's exhausting and it's exhausting for everyone I do not know women who either haven't been the subject of violence themselves the subject of fear the subject of attack or don't know women close to them that have so yes it's not all men and of course that's true but it's all women it's all women all day all the time having to think about it having to adjust their behaviour having to adjust their lives having to be fearful knowing someone who's been attacked been attacked themselves so it is much deeper than a law and order issue. It is an attitudinal issue. Now, look, what can the state do? There are things that we can do. I have raised consistently a need for a very different relationship and sexual education program from the earliest age, from the age of five, where we can teach children about consent and personhood and boundaries. Because, Matt, what else are we going to do? Your, you know, the women in your life, whether you're with your mother, sister, kids, every generation has experienced this. So when we bring their five and six-year-olds going to school tomorrow brought by parents and they look around the playground and they wonder, well, which of them, which of them 20 years from now or 15 or 30 years from now is going to be the person who's attacked and which of them is going to be the attacker and what are we doing that's going to intervene in that in a really deep, lasting and meaningful way that gives that next generation a real chance to have a different experience in a cycle of violence that every generation before them has experienced. It has to be through educational, through real educational change. Now, there is a program being developed in the Department of Education. I know they're working on the junior cycle program now, but there is also a senior cycle program to be done and a primary cycle. And they're doing that in what I believe is a consecutive way, and it should be contemporaneous. It needs to be more urgent, in my view. Every time we talk about domestic, sexual, and gender-based violence, we come, I come back to this. The domestic violence groups come back to this. We have to teach our young boys and girls, and everybody else, it would appear, that women and men are exactly equal and that there should be no difference between going for a walk depending on your gender. Jennifer Carl McNeil Finnegale, thank you for joining us. More of your comments and things that